Hello guys and welcome back to Dark Horse FM and it feels nice coming back to Football Manager 2022 and actually miss playing this game so it feels nice sharing Football Manager tactics, hints and tips for you guys and in this video I'm going to share with you how to create a Football Manager tactic step by step. I'm going to take you through a step by step guide on how to create Football Manager tactics for any team of your choice, any random team. Following this video step by step you'll be able to see from the beginning to basically the your preset tactic in Football Manager based on the players that you have. So stick by in this video and I'll catch you guys in the middle of it or let's get straight to it anyway. So the first thing you're going to want to do is to look at the league and just see where you rack up in comparison with all the other teams in your division. So that can actually give you a rough idea of how your tactic is going to set up and how you're going to play out of that tactic. Circle Borg have been predicted to finish in ninth place so I know that my tactic is not expected to blow everybody away in the league but we're supposed to at least be tight enough to get a point out of the big teams and then also to win the teams that are below us. With our season objectives covered we can look at the squad and then looking at, looking at squad that we're going to go into squad depth and then I know this is just ignore this Christmas tree lineup there is here. What you're going to do next is to look at the roles, looking at your position overview and then the current ability you're going to rate the team based on their current abilities and see where you have players and where you do not have players in your team. There is a goalkeeper here, one great goalkeeper by the way, and then I noticed I do not really have full backs or, yeah I do have right backs but I don't really have a position for left back, there's just five good left backs and that's that's something we can work with anyway. We have good central defenders, just the one, and then we have a great number of central midfielders and then there's one great dm so i'm already seeing my favorite tactic which is a 4-3-3 i'm going to try to avoid that as much as possible because i actually want to show you how you can design this tactic well based on the players that are here although it's looking like a 4-3-3 is likely one great striker so 4-4-2 is out of the question we do have two alternatives here or three alternative thanks that and the rest and looking at their positions they might also be able to play in this attacking midfield position Thanks that okay he's a forward as well so that's good that's basically get the rough idea of where your players are and then you can know how you can design the tactics so i'm going to be lacking a player and left back although we have five good players there and having one striker one great striker means that a striker with one or a tactic with one forward might be useful for us looking at then in post in potential attributes that so we can see that we have four potential ability let's say great strikers when you look at the potential ability and things that is there so as an alternative tactic 442 421 42 like diamond 442 diamond might be useful as well if you have a younger player you can pair with one of your central attackers and create like a 442 but the main objective here is looking at the current ability you have just the main one main striker you can work with that you're sure is your center forward that would be a good way to start just out of the team report then you're going to look at the team's comparison looking at the analyst report and then you can just just scroll down to comparison and then you're going to see how your team pairs with or along with all the other teams attribute wise we're going to ignore the general and then that's average age finances and all that go into the players positions and you can see that we have based on attributes we have good players with or we have players with good decision making good leadership skills good teamwork good and passing range and good first touch ability so you can play a kind of slicky style of football even though we are a team that is predicted to finish in the lower third of the league not that much for strength and what's this other work rate as well so not much quick running <laughs> which is scary and then looking at the goalkeepers then we our goalkeepers are actually struggling in most of our in every department really except agility and area ability so that's not really really good for us so we can see that well reflexes you don't really want your goalkeeper to be one-on-one -on -one. that's what i'm just not seeing here so you might want to play with a normal standard defensive line and not be that much of a high line which is we might expose our goalkeeper unnecessarily we do the same in comparison here for all the other um all the um all the other positions as well defense and in midfield and attack we can see just how our team racks up anyway and then you can see that there's good finishing here for and our attackers we have good finishing by a higher than most of the other teams in the league so we're going to do or trying to score goals we have good heading as well and good jumping reach so floated crosses might be useful in this case acceleration as well we have good acceleration so a pc counter attacking style of play good running might be useful for us in attack as well looking at midfield good decision making so a fast paced style of play is very very useful in this sense good technical abilities good vision as well and then good passing good teamwork so that's helpful for us when we're trying to press from the front that might also be very useful so basically i can already see what i can ask my players to do and what i can ask my players not to do and this particular 
analyst comparison report actually helps us build the team mentality. I'm going to go into the player or oh, that sorry that might help us build the team's instruction. We're going to go into the player instructions real quick and then we can see how we can include those. So for players then we can go into the teams like the squad list here on the left hand side you can go into the squad list and then see all your players and then kind of um, filter them by report so you can go to players here and then filter it by assistant managers report that's going to bring up the star ratings that way you can filter the players by your best players according to your assistant managers opinion anyway you still have to look at the players in detail but then you can filter it by your best players all the way to the mid players that are somewhat you know on the par and then Rasmus Cartensen, we can see, is our main defender here as a right back, and then we have an attacking midfielder on the right, a goalkeeper, and then a defensive midfielder as well. So, roughly, as much as I'm trying to run away from the 4 3 3, the 4 3 3 with the DM is actually looking like a likely tactic that we might end up using with this Silkeborg side. But then we can see that an attacking midfielder as well here, a 30 year old attacking midfielder, Nicolas Hellenius, he is quite good as well, and he's also one of the experienced players on the team. 30 years of age so you might want to be using him as an alternative tactic to use a 4-2-3-1 system or a 4-1-1-3-1 kind of system so we're going to see how that plays out in this particular setup how we're going to i'm still planning to show you how we're going to create that tactic a quick thing you can also do after looking at the teams based on their player ability you can look at the you can filter by attributes so looking at them players physical attributes you can see who the play the fastest players are you can expect that nicola lucas clayton he's on loan so that's not going to be someone we're going to look at nikolai Vallis, one of the fastest as well 15 for pace so he's actually a very good runner but he's a good player on the has a good right foot so you can use him as a winger or we can use him as an inverted winger on the where on the left hand side you can actually ask him to play as an inverted winger on the left hand side so so to the tactic board then we can see well just off the bat i can see the kind of shape i want to build because i have one attacking midfielder that is quite good i'm going to leave him here and then i have one forward that i can use and then the other ones are actually younger players so i'm not going to have to force them to play that quickly and then we have a one defensive midfielder as well that is just as good so we can have one defensive midfielder one attacking midfielder one central midfielder in the hole but the problem with this world is we're probably going to need a player that's going to be very strong. What it's all it's a whole design process, so let's keep going. One goal one standard goalkeeper, and then we have, like we said, one white player here and the other white player here. And then we have an attacking midfielder in that sense. So basically, this is how the tactic is like roughly this is the way I'll probably want to build it, and then we can tweak it all around throughout the season to see how that goes. Now that we have the tactic sort of let me say created we're going to look at the squad in the list and then try to fill in those players based on the shape that we just picked out so looking at the player based on report again we're going to filter it down to players based on their best ability rasmus cartons and i went to pick him to play as the winger on the fullback on the right hand side sebastian jergensen is going to play as the winger on the right hand side and then our goalkeeper nikolai larson is going to play as the standard goalkeeper um looking at the defensive midfielder then we do have a defensive midfielder in Robert Gujani and then Poyerson is a central midfielder on attack DT is Stefan Poyerson he can actually play as a central midfielder in this position on attack and then there's another central midfielder in Mark Brink he can play as Ahmed Salah so that is already giving me another idea as to a different shape that we can use the midfielder on the left hand side then is going to be Valis, he's going to play as an inverted winger, but we're going to get to that in a in a, in a minute or so. Looking at the centre halves, then we have Salkist and Joel Felix as the uh, the central defender. So then the deep line, the fullback on the left hand side is Dal, and then we have one more player who's missing. We do have a goalkeeper, the centre forward. The centre forward will be Lind. I already checked him, Alexander Lind. And you can see that his preferred role, according to this list, the best role is the pressing forward. So we're going to have Lind there. We're also going to switch the role to the pressing forward. And then the last person that's missing is the attacking midfielder in the central attacking midfielder. We had one when we were actually spying on the players. And let's just see. Attacking midfielder in Nicolas Hellenius. There we go. That's the last piece of the puzzle. And Roughly, we already have a system that we've created in here that can actually get those players to work. The next thing we want to do is to try and fit those players 
to their preferred roles. Now, according to media description, we can see that Alexander Lane was also asked, or let's say his media description, his preference would be to play as a pressing forward on a tactic. And that's because we also want him to try and engage the opposition and press from the front. And then he has support behind him as well in the three that the two wingers are the attacking midfielder as well. So he can actually start the press. Playing as a pressing forward on the tactic team might be useful for us. And then he has people that are going to help him out here and press as well. And Valis as well to also play as an inverted winger on support duty. And then Jurgensen as well to play as another inverted winger on the right hand side. Hellenius is in the hole here. Looking at his passing ability, he has passing 13. Vision 12. He's a good playmaker. He shoots with power and then he comes deep to get the ball, moves into China as well. So attacking advanced playmaker is not really a role I'm going to be looking at here. Attacking midfielder on attack duty. Okay, doesn't get forward. Attacking midfielder on support duty looks like a very good one. Attacking midfielder on support duty as well. Also asking him to try and close down more might be something we're going to look at. But for now, poor, um, poor Dasson. I hope I'm going to get this guy's name right. Poyerson actually can play as a central midfielder on attack duty in this position and then having Hellenius on support duty might also counter for him, Poyerson getting forward so Hellenius can actually stay in the hole and also support the defensive midfielder here in Gojani. The wing backs are going to play us on as wing backs on automatic duty. Looking at their crossing abilities, there's nothing too spectacular about my wing backs, I have to admit. So having them play as wing backs on automatic duty is not a bad idea. Looking at these central defenders then. Both central defenders one has passing 12. I would likely want to use him as a ball playing defender, but I notice that I'm going to expect him to be doing too much. With that vision, using him as a central defender or defender is not a bad idea as well. Larson as the goalkeeper, this is the last but not the least, no pun intended. Looking at the eccentricity of Nikolai Larson, he has eccentricity of four. This is what I always check when it comes to goalkeepers. If the goalkeeper has good eccentricity up to 10, maybe 11, I'm going, probably going to consider him as a super keeper on support duty. But if he has eccentricity below 10, somewhere between 8 and 7, that's super keeper on defense. But once it's below 5, there's no need for me to actually ask him to play as a super keeper. So I'm just going to leave Larson as a super keeper on, as a standard goalkeeper on defense. Now that we've got our players' roles all selected, how they relate with each other is going to be interesting. We have a defensive midfielder here, and then we have a central midfielder on the tackling team that's going to be getting forward. I'll be pressing forward that's going to be pressing the hell out of the opposition and then two we have three supporting players that are helping the striker to actually press the opposition and try to win the ball back as early as possible so we look set on paper this actually looks neat for me and it's probably going to be something i'm going to enjoy using while playing the game but that's basically how you can create your tactic based on the players that you have using just the attributes looking using your comparison and then according to our media prediction we're predicted to finish in ninth place in the league of 12. So using a balanced mentality is not going to be a bad idea. I did consider going for cautious mentality, but then I realized in FM 2022, the mentality does actually play against you sometimes. Cautious is going to be, the cautious mentality is going to somewhat give too much respect to the opposition. So I'm going to go against that unless I absolutely have to. But since I don't, I'm going to just leave this unbalanced. And since I recall that my team is a fast based side and we're very good defensive or we're very good decisively, I'm also technically good on the ball as well. We're going to ask the team to be a bit quicker and try to counter the attack or get the ball quickly as possible into the opposition's half and then do it with a slightly higher tempo. We have good passing range and good decision making as well. So playing with a more expressive, creative freedom is an interesting way to go as well. Our goalkeeper, I'm not going to be asking him to pass the ball out of the fence. I'm going to leave this blank. Since we're going to be good at passing into space, I know we have the legs to actually get that ball. But I'm going to leave that blank as well because it's in-game. We're going to see how that kind of plays out. Now, from the previous attributes that we checked out, our team's aggressiveness, somewhat stamina, work rate as well. We do have good work rate, good stamina. And now we're going to ask the team to actually press a lot more. Looking at the teams, since we have high numbers up high up the field, we're going to ask the team to play with a high defensive or higher line of engagement. The standard defensive line is going to, or defensive line is going to be standard because I do I know I have fast players that can get back quickly, but I also don't have those players that are let's say defensively aware of how high they're supposed to be or how low they're supposed to be. And also I'm trying to protect my goalkeeper in this case because my goalkeeper is not very good with one-on-one -on -one situations. So Playing with the standard defensive line is going to be a good way to go. Defensive width, I'm going to leave this on standard as well. But I know that to some extent, narrow defensive width sort of helps. 
But also, I don't know how tall my players are in defense. If they're not tall enough, and then I play with another defensive with the opposition would just be crossing the ball and then winning all the headers. But since we do have some heading, but I notice that our headers are good in attack. So I'm going to leave our defensive with on standard. And then we have Lind in this situation here. So he can actually, he's actually like six foot one. So he can actually win a lot of balls in the air. I'm going to actually consider using floater crosses when oppositions or when the opportunity presents itself. But more often than not, that's going to be mixed crosses as well. And that's basically how you can create a tactic for any team that you just joined. If you're not sure of your squad and you're not sure of the side that you're supposed to use, just use these principles you can apply to any football manager that you're playing. And it's probably going to still give you the same result. You're going to actually find this best setup for your team and then you can work with that and use that to tweak your team and get the best results out of them. If you actually found this video useful, let me know in the comment section as well. Leave a like on it too and also hit the subscribe button. And I'll catch you guys with more useful, useful football manager tips like this. And also tactic testing videos. And I'll catch you in the next video.